Uh, I just wanted to start, obviously we're here to celebrate just a tremendous project for this area and what it's going to do for residents, uh, not just here locally, but really regionally, uh, speaks to the importance of transportation planning and we couldn't have done it without just a wonderful group of partners uh, that Paula and Bonnie are going to speak to, but I wanted to take a brief minute to recognize some of the, the key elected officials that are here. We have Round Lake Beach Mayor Rich Hill, and I believe some members are uh, here from his Board of Trustees, if you could raise your hand. Thank you so much. Always need four votes to get something through our council, so thank you. Uh, Mayor, Round Lake Mayor Dan McGillis is here and some members of his board. Thank you very much for coming. We have Grant Township Supervisor Kay Straskovic. She's here. Hey Kay, thank you for coming. We've got the executive, uh, former executive director representing uh, Lake County Transportation Alliance, Marty Bueller is here. And uh, just like we need four votes to get things through our villages, I need 11 votes to get them through the county. And we've got some people here that allow me to do my job. And this is really the, one of the best jobs in the world. And we've got a great board. Our Public Works and Transportation Committee Chair and District 5 Representative, Bonnie Thompson Carter. <laughs> Public Works and uh, Transportation Committee Member and District 6 Representative, Jeff Werfel. Vice Chair of the County Board and District 15 Representative Carol Calabresa. And uh, Terry Wilkie is also a board member from this area, sends his regrets. He's not able to attend, but wanted to thank everybody for uh, their partnership in getting this key project done. Uh, so today we're very excited to see that this roadway is near completion. A uh, couple years ago, it looked very different, and this intersection wasn't flowing, it was in gridlock. And so the opportunity uh, to provide residents with a key transportation uh, congestion relief uh, project was critical. 50 trains per day would come through and completely stop traffic. And as we look at this intersection behind me, we can say that those days are over. Uh, I'll let Paula Trigg, uh, our county engineer, go into more specific detail about the project, uh, but want to uh, note a couple things. One, this great separation, as I mentioned, is the product of key partnerships that we like to leverage throughout our work to advance our transportation goals. And it's also the largest single project in the Lake County DOT's 101 year history. So let's give a round of applause about that. Another key thing is we look to address traffic uh, mitigate uh, traffic congestion uh, issues and advance our transportation priorities. We also need to see them not only as transportation projects but as economic development tools. And by moving traffic through this area, we are going to have the opportunity to alleviate congestion and also provide the opportunity for access uh, for economic development. Uh, so next, I would like to introduce Paula Trigg, who's going to tell you a little bit more about the project. Thanks, Paula. So, first of all, I too want to thank everybody for being here today. It is a glorious day, much better than the one that we originally scheduled, so I'm glad that we made that decision to postpone. So, I especially want to thank my husband for being here today. Um, he came out with out with me to see this project on numerous occasions, uh, after hours, weekends, holidays, and uh, in his terms we were going halfway to Iowa because we live way on the east side of the county, but it is a great project and um, I always wanted to be out here, so we were out here a lot. Um, as County Board Chairman Lauer uh, indicated that this intersection has been congested for over 30 years. So early in my professional career, I was a, on the engineering staff here in the village of Round Lake Beach, and um, this intersection was a congestion problem even way back then with uh, the road intersections, the developments that were occurring, and the railroad intersection, but also the, the key uh, utility corridor that was right there. So no one wanted to tackle the problem of fixing the intersection. And um, 
I credit the person for wanting to tackle this uh, with my predecessor, Marty Bueller, who is here today. So in 2008, uh, Marty uh, put together a list of uh, large uh, transportation improvement projects that we could really, uh, now that we had the quarter percent sales tax, we could really tackle and, uh, and really make some big improvements. And this was one of those, and I really thank him for that because it's a great, great project. So we started planning for this improvement back in 2008. We started constructing it in 2013, and we opened all the lanes to traffic in 2015 in August, August of each of those years. So seven years start to finish, and that is quite an accomplishment for a project of this magnitude. So some of the statistics about the amount of congestion we were talking about, um, Rollins Road carries between 20 and 24,000 vehicles per day on it. Our Illinois Route 83 carries between 18 and 22,000 vehicles per day. As Aaron mentioned, the railroad, the, both Metro and the freight, is more than 50 uh, trains per day. And um, I think we saw a few of them go through just as we were here setting up today. So it, it's a pretty much constant. And uh, while congestion and getting stuck by the train is uh, frustrating to us motorists, it's a really big deal to the emergency responders. And uh, we're really, really grateful that we've been able to open this corridor up to try to open that mobility up. And um, we worked closely with the fire chief, and sorry that he's not here today because he and I have had a lot of fun with this project. So, <laughs> um, The construction cost was about $33 million, uh, which includes the beautiful grade separation that you see in front of you, as well as about 10.2 lane miles of roadway. Um, those are broken up on uh, Rollins 83 and uh, Haynesville Road but 10.2 lane miles, it's a, quite a bit of roadway improvements. We modernized five traffic signal intersections and interconnected them so that the, all the signals are talking to one another. We enhanced street lighting on both Rollins, Haynesville, and um, uh, the, along 83 also. We provided new sidewalks to the shopping centers and the parking lots, landscaping, drainage improvements. Uh, the village's water and sewer had to be lowered due to the great separation. Um, but really important and something that got overlooked a lot in some of our press about this was the, the eight-foot wide multi-use path that we're standing on right now that connects from this park all the way over uh, to the east side of 83 to the Forest Preserve. And it's a great connection, part of the Millennium Trail, and we're very, very proud and happy to make that connection. With this project, we also look, worked closely with the CN Railroad to uh, be prepared for when they want to multi-track their railroad. So the, the abutments are set up that another railroad bridge can be set right on top of those in the future when the railroad is ready and really minimize any impacts to the motorists at that time. Um, numerous people have said to me, how did you get this done so fast? And the answer to all that is that we work together. So I really, really want to thank all of you for being partners with it, and um, we're excited to have completed the improvement. So over under the shelter, we have a short video that's set up. We had a, a, a camera going the entire time during this project, and uh, it's about a two to three minute video that shows the transformation. So it shows the temporary roads being built, the seasons changing, the temporary road going away, and the new roadway open. So it's a, a, a snippet, but it's a, quite an accomplishment, and we're very happy. So the next thing I'd like to do is introduce uh, the committee chairman for the Public Works and Transportation Committee, Bonnie Carter Thompson, Thompson Carter, and she will um, talk to you about the other partners that we've had on this improvement. But I, I have to say one more thing. I forgot a whole paragraph back here. So there is a partner that um, Bonnie will speak to all a lot of our partners and the agencies that we worked with, but um, the partners that I really wanted to talk about were the partners that I have at Lake County Division of Transportation. So it takes a team to do what we did, and from the beginning stages of planning when we had all the nighttime meetings with the public and the Area Business Task Force and all those meetings to then we got into design and right-of-way acquisition and all the partners and staff members that helped us with that. And then during construction, uh, uh, numerous people in helped us with that also. And one or two times we run into little problems during construction and they were great to help us uh, overcome those. And uh, there's still a couple that we're working on, but uh, we will get to those. So it takes teamwork, dedication, and careful planning to do what we did. And I thank all my uh, folks that I work with at Lake County DOT and our consultants that helped us. So thank you very, very much. And Bonnie, now. Thank you, 
Paula. It is really exciting to be here. As a uh, resident that's just a few miles down the road, we, I use Rollins Road all the time and have uh, tried to maneuver and find out, you know, try to guess when the trains are coming so when I could get to uh, the office on time. And uh, I can't thank you enough. It took a lot of patience for the project, not as much, um, and that's mainly because we had the lanes that were built and that really kept things going. So as, as Paula and Aaron both indicated, a project of this size and scope takes the work of very many dedicated partners and the local entities working together. But before we start recognizing the significant roles that our partners play, I think it's important to point out that this all took the support of the entire community to pull it off. We have to start with thanking our residents and our local businesses for their patience and understanding. Sometimes we were taxed, many times we were not. This is no easy task. We knew it was going to be an inconvenience going into the project, but today we can see the end result. I'm sure there are a lot of people to thank. I'm going to mention some. If I forget, Paula and Aaron, or Aaron, when you wrap it up, maybe you could uh, you know, um, add them. Our local agencies. Wow, a big thank you to the village of Round Lake Beach. Mayor Rich Hill and his staff. They were instrumental in providing the connection to our local businesses and their help in coordinating all the adjustments to the water, sanitary, and sidewalk facilities. Thank you to the Round Lake Area Park District. We use this land that we are standing on today for the temporary roadway and of course the bike path connection. Without the temporary roadway, the project would have had to be detoured onto other aerial roads that are also already congested. The Lake County Forest Preserve, we want to thank them also for the connection of the bike path to the east end of the project to the Millennium Trail, which leads to the Rowland Savannah Forest Preserve and the Round Lake Area Chamber of Commerce. IDOT and CN Railroad, for thank, we'll thank them for allowing them, us to work in the right of way to make all the adjustments and the improvements necessary for such a large undertaking. Professional firms that we want to thank is Alfred Benich and Company, our designers and construction inspection, Trans Systems with the project manager, FH, pa FH Passion, SN Nielsen and Associates LLC, the general contractor, and their numerous subcontractors, many of which were located here in Lake County and employed our residents. ComEd, the use of the right of way for the temporary roadway and the other coordination to make this project possible. And of course, our local media for helping us to continue to get the word out about this important project. Our next speaker is going to be Mayor Rich Hill. And while he's walking up here, he and I were talking earlier and I reminded him of a conversation of a meeting we actually had 10 years ago in his office when I was Forest Preserve President. We sat down and we said, what are your plans? I came in with staff, was, met with you and Dave Kilbane and said, what are your plans in the village? We need to get you hooked up to the Millennium Trail. This is so important for your residents to be able to get to Rollins Savannah and all the other preserves. What can we do? We looked at all these big maps and we said, well, if this happens, we can go this way. And if this happens, maybe we could go this way. This was before we decided to tackle this whole intersection. So I am really happy to be here to know that this happened, that all of your residents, not only do we have a safe road that we can um, travel on, but that we also have all of your residents hooked up to the Forest Preserves and the Millennium Trail. Thank you very much. And as I mentioned to Bonnie after that, you know, we were looking at how we're going to put the bike trail through. I said, well, maybe we just do this little side project and redo Rollins Road in the process. So yeah. it worked out well. <laughs> anyway, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I do have some of my village trustees here today. I have uh, Trustee Larry Mount, Trustee Sue Butler, and Trustee Sylvia Delanez, <laughs> Trustee Lynette Bennis. We also have, uh, we really did the hard work around here, a lot of our staff. Uh, we have our administrator, Dave Cobain, Chief of Police, Dave Kerr. Back here. Oh, Scott Hill's our public works director. You know, we're the, the people that made these things happen. You know, us people that 
uh, make the decisions, make the decisions for it to go forward, but they're the ones that do the day-to-day -day groundwork and make sure things they follow through on. You would think that we all compared notes the way we all of our speeches are very similar on this. I also was going to mention how it's been 30 years in the making for this road and uh, it's been identified many times as one of the worst intersections in Lake County. There were many bad accidents here and very tough to get through. Uh, not only do we have the three roads all converging here, but with the railroad tracks and all the trains going through, it's very difficult to maneuver through. We also have three retail centers on the three corners, three out of four corners. The county put out a challenge uh, to find the intersections that had the worst, that were the worst, and where the improvements could make the most difference. And this intersection easily rose to the top. Many commuters would avoid our business district because of the difficulty getting through and how dangerous it could be. Our business lost customers and in the process. Now that the intersection is complete, that should no longer be a concern. Commuters can easily move through Round Lake Beach to get to where they need to go, or they can stop here and shop and get back onto the roads easily. This project was designed with the business in mind, and the aesthetics of the product uh, draw you right to this area. It's a beautiful area. All the aesthetics around the outside of the project turned out wonderful. I expect substantial growth from uh, the improvements that are done here, and you can see so by just uh, the mire, 200,000 square foot mire going off to the north side here. All by itself is going to be a huge improvement, taking over where the old Walmart used to be. As Bonnie said, we're also able to add uh, some sidewalks and uh, put us through water mains and sewer mains. Plus, they had to be moved because the depth that we're at was just way too shallow for the project in itself, and we're able to get better, better uh, service for the future. We also mentioned about communication, and communication is probably one of the best parts about this project. I've seen a lot of projects throughout Lake County and throughout the state where people didn't know what was going on on what day or what was going on the next day. Uh, they did a wonderful job both with the meetings beforehand, with the businesses, with the community, to make sure they had the right project before they even began. And once the project began, they kept in constant communication. Uh, Mark Molnar was constantly emailing out, letting us know and letting the residents know, this is going on tomorrow, so you might want to avoid the area. We're closing the road for 24 hours this day and this day. And it worked out tremendous. That little bit of communication takes a lot of edge off of people's worries, and uh, they're wondering, am I going to be stuck in traffic today? So they weren't afraid to continue to use Rollins Road in uh, Route 83. And just as a, as a closing, a big thank you to Lake County and uh, the Lake County Board for funding this project, for viewing it as a necessary project in Lake County, and for being the biggest project they've ever done. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hill. We also have District 6 Board Member Jeff Werfel here who'd like to say a couple words. Uh, yes, very short. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, for me as an elected official, as a public servant, uh, I think it's very important uh, that uh, one of our main missions as elected officials is to improve the quality of life of uh, our constituents, residents that uh, we represent and serve. And uh, that's not only for the elected officials, but also for uh, staff members of the particular uh, governmental entities that are involved in projects like this. Uh, and even uh, community groups that are involved with making these kind of improvements. So we, we've heard of all those people and all the thanks that have been given. Uh, the, the district that I represent is District 6, which is made up of uh, Grays Lake, Round Lake Park, Haynesville, Round Lake Beach, uh, and some of Wildwood. Uh, and the uh, quality of life improvement from a project such as this is inestimable. The way that I look at it is, is uh, uh, it provides the ability, most obviously, uh, for our residents and our constituents to spend a heck of a lot less time in traffic, uh, and it means that they can spend a lot more time doing things that they would like to do, uh, such as being with their families, friends, etc. Uh, obviously, it has some environmental impacts, and then, as Bonnie had mentioned, uh, another component of this is the trail connections that have been made, which is also uh, a great quality of life improvement for uh, our residents. Uh, for the folks that we all represent and or work for. Uh, so in closing, I wanted to thank all those residents and constituents for um, their uh, patience and their understanding while such a Herculean task was going on. And I'd also like to thank them now and in advance uh, for the other improvements that are going on being put on by the county uh, in my district, District 6, but really in Central Lake County. Uh, so right down 
the road here, right down Haynesville Road, we are in the middle of a project of improving Washington Street. And it, uh, similar to this one, it involves uh, uh, making an act grade change for the railroad crossing, and it, it'll, along with the widening that's being done. And it'll be a tremendous improvement, and again, a, a, a tremendous uh, uh, addition to the quality of life of uh, the residents. So I want to thank those residents and constituents. Uh, please continue to be patient and understanding uh, as that particular project right down the road, so to say, uh, is uh, w it'll be completed at the end of uh, 2016. At least that's the schedule. I hope I'm not talking out of turn, Paul. Um, uh, and the uh, same applies for uh, uh, Peterson Road also, to further to the south. So I, I just want folks to know, uh, particularly constituents uh, and uh, residents of the area, that uh, the county is, uh, is kind of on a mission uh, here when it comes to these kind of improvements and uh, Central Lake County I think is benefiting from it and uh, and I really appreciate it. I am proud to be part of this effort and that's all. Thank you. So uh, just to close I, I wanted to thank again all of our partners. It, it needs to be said I think sometimes we it isn't said enough that we open the papers and we see a lot about how government doesn't work together and this project is just one of a lot of examples on how Lake County and our local units of government, the state and others, do work well together in an efficient and effective manner to meet the needs of our residents. Uh, so thank you all for being here. We had two people that walked in that I want to mention. Uh, District 9 board member Mary Ross Cunningham from the Waukegan area. Guy I see around the county almost as much as me, North Chicago Mayor Leon Rockingham. Thank you for being here. And with that, we can now mark this project as no longer in progress, but complete. got the video over here it looks like there's some sort of food maybe and Paula would like everybody to save uh, to take some pictures and just celebrate this so thank you